have a question. How did you survive the Canadian health system, you know, as, as America's you know, broken and mm -hmm, socialized? Mm -hmm. um, I was very lucky that, um, you know, well, first of all, my health insurance declined because it was a terrorist attack. So it was after September 11th. So there was a little clause, you know, like really, really tiny in my insurance policy that said, we do not cover terrorist attacks. So um, I had to borrow money from a bunch of people. I mean, a, a very good friend of mine paid for my flight, $25,000 to be overnighted uh, to, you know, a major hospital. Um, the Canadian system, actually, I want, I want to say that um, they really did uh, an exception. We actually had a, um, a fundraising initiatives with the Canadian Red Cross that was actually willing to supply some funds and fundraise on my behalf in order for me to be treated in Canada. Um, and once that started, um, and we had, we had talked to, my parents had talked to every level of the government, believe me, in Canada and in Quebec, everywhere. All the doors were knocked and, and shut in front of them. And finally, uh, funny enough, when we went to a press conference with the, Ameri with the Canadian Red Cross, oh, my dad got a phone call from, from um, you know, the health department and said, shh, enough noise, we'll take care of Sophie. So that, that's, this is how it happened. So. Um, you know, a Canadian system for me, it was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, I loved it. I mean, I, I had everything that, that I needed there. So hopefully if, if it would happen here, hopefully we could, uh, we could make that happen too. What happened to the other couple that you were with? You know, we all survived. We were a group of five. Um, we all survived. I was the one who got mostly injured. My husband was second. Uh, just two out of the five actually had burns. So my husband and I had burns, but the three other ones... Um, got just, you know, the common thing, eardrums perforated, teeth chipped and, you know, bruises there and then. Yeah. So, yeah, my, my group of friends, we all made it alive. So they were all there to help me, which was great. Yeah, my, my husband was, uh, he's American, so I'm Canadian, so, um, you know, we all have our different opportunities in terms of what we can, how we can share that story with, uh, with the different audiences, but he was invited by the Obama administration to talk about the Guantanamo Bay, um, uh, you know, detaining, um, and how they would actually change that um, and, and close that uh, in Cuba, and um, he was really feeling, he was with a lot of people on that task force, that were actually September 11th, um, um, people that were actually either widow or they had lost, you know, a daughter or, you know, a son. So um, again, to him, it gave him so much perspective. When he came back home, you know, we were holding each one of our child, and he says, you know, Sophie, we are so lucky to have made it, you know, alive because we could have we could have been gone. So really. Even in, in our situation, there are people that are even worse than us, obviously. And, uh, and we're so thankful to be here. And we'll never, never have the same perspective on life um, ever again. I mean, it's, and, uh, and the scars are there to remind us. And, you know, a speaking engagement like this one really reminds me as well that um, I'm lucky to be here. Okay, one last question, and I think we'll, we'll wrap up. Yes, and that would be you. Oh, it's not a very important question. I don't want to be the last one. I just wonder what your husband did. My husband uh, was working in telecommunications. Um, the company is actually based in Mentor, funny enough. And uh, he actually started the market in, um, in Brazil, developing the market for infrastructure for cell phones and, um, and those types of things. Yeah, the market was booming in Brazil at the time, so he was busy professionally there. But he's politically active in... Yeah. Well, he's, yeah. I mean, no, no, he's not in the, you know, in the political no, arena. In, in, no. In, Oh, yeah. These organizations that Obama did ask him. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, as a survivor, he, yeah. Yeah, they wanted to hear his opinion. And of a, you know, a terrorist attack that was actually um, not September 11th, because that's probably easier to find people in the United States that are associated to that. So, well, um, the exercise that I had in mind was you have a pink folder on your table. And what I would like you to, um, to think is, if you want to join me in that exercise, we don't have the time to stop too often, but if you want to think about one thing, one thing, we're still in January, there's still time for a New Year's resolution, um, think about one thing that you want to do differently this year. 
Is it something that you want to do to make a difference in your community? Is it something that um, you want to respect your employees better? You want to um, appreciate your colleagues better at your workplace? You want to really focus on, you know, um, on receiving change more positively? What is it that you want to do this year to make a difference? You want to be involved with this Chamber of Commerce. We always need more people, right, Steve? Um, Think about this one thing that you would like to do and write it on that one card. Everybody has a card at the table. And if you want, seal it back in the envelope, put your address, and I'll mail it to you in four weeks just to remind you that uh, this is the commitment that you made to yourself. And uh, so think about it, write it down, and then you can put it back in the folder before you leave. And I think Steve wants to wrap up, right? Sophie Soreau, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, Sophie.